welcome back uh, we are discussing the first element for the design of fixtures and jigs that is locating and supporting the work in fixtures and jigs in previous segments we discussed some basics of locating and supporting the work and then we discussed some principles of locating the work in fixtures and jigs and now we will start discussion on methods of locating the work in fixtures and jigs i have divided this discussion into two parts first we will discuss locating blanks or machining in lathes and then we will discuss it for machines other than lathes particularly the milling and cnc machines so as you are aware that in lathes generally the work piece is having a circular cross section and it rotates so there are different methods of locating and clamping the job on lathe we will discuss each of self centering chuck self centering collets we will discuss uh, uh, holding the work piece between centers and we will discuss the use of mandrel of course there are other devices as well but these are the devices that locate the work piece in proper orientation for performing a, a certain operation so by definition they all are uh, fixtures that are used alone or in combination with other work piece holding devices first three jaw self centering chuck this is perhaps the most commonly used work piece holding device on a lathe it has three jaws and these three jaws are attached to a scroll plate so if we with the help of some key like this move this scroll plate in and out so do these three jaws also move and once we hold the work piece between these three jaws it is automatically located by location we mean that the axis of the work piece that is held between jaws is just along the axis of the spindle so both axes match so that is actually a major requirement of uh, holding the work piece on a lathe for turning or thread making or other operations so in this way the work piece is being located as well as clamped so three jaw chuck by definition is a fixture so here you can see a circular blank is held between three jaws of the three jaw chuck so we require the axis of the blank to be a concentric with the axis of the spindle and that is automatically achieved using a three jaw chuck here in this case this three jaw chuck is being used in combination with another device that is steady rest because it is a long work piece in this case a pipe that is to be turned on this end this side so if we do not hold it on this end then during turning it will uh, move up and uh, up and down so this three jaw chuck is actually locating the axis of the work piece and these three jaws of three jaw chuck and three jaws of uh, the steady rest are clamping the work piece so this combination of three jaw chuck and steady rest is a fixture in this case because three jaw chuck is locating the work piece and three jaw chuck and steady rest in combination are holding the work piece um on two opposite ends apart from the steady rest another device that is used in this fashion is follower rest the difference is that steady rest is fixed in position while the follower rest moves along the work piece Uh, on the on the carriage so uh, the follower rest is used for long thin work pieces but it, that is also similar in shape but uh, its use is slightly different so three jaw chuck in combination with a steady rest or in combination with a follower rest is an example of a fixture being used on a lathe machine the second a device that is used on a lathe is self centering collet chucks so they are generally used for small work pieces that are not too uh, not, not too long and do not have so small work pieces like uh, this one that has been held in this collet chuck 
So they are available in different designs, but basically they are having a tapered or threaded end through which it is held into the chuck. And then in this end, you can just push the workpiece or a blank into this hole and you can hold it. So it is simultaneously located as well as clamped. Apart from the work pieces, collets are also used to hold some uh, cutting tools like uh, uh, the tools that are used on a drilling machine, like tabs or reamers as well. But on lathe, it is used to hold small work pieces and they are automatically located and clamped. And of course, you sometimes need to hold this collet further in some other device or directly into the, uh, it is directly inserted into the spindle. The third device is a pair of devices. Actually, they are called centers. So turning between centers is one of the common methods of turning on lathe, especially for, for long work pieces. So here you can see, this is the tail stock of the lathe. So this is one center that, it is, that, that is inserted into the, uh, this uh, 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 tail stock. And then you have another center that is further held using this three jaw chuck and that is inserted into the, into the spindle in the headstock. So you need to drill a small hole at the end of the workpiece or the blank so that this tapered end of the center can actually hold the workpiece through that small hole. So once you hold the workpiece between centers, it is automatically located because these axes of the of the tailstock and the spindle in the headstock are concentric. So once you insert the center into these two spindles, one in the tailstock and the other in the headstock, so they, they are just along the same line, both axes of the center. So once the workpiece is held between centers, it is automatically located. Now, sometimes th these two centers are sufficient to hold as well as clamp the workpiece. So that is actually the definition of a fixture but sometimes you may need some, some additional device to hold the workpiece, uh, just like in, in this case. So we have, again, a center inserted into the spindle of the tailstock and another center inserted into the spindle of the headstock. So workpiece is properly located as well as clamped, but you are additionally using a lathe dog to provide the drive to uh, to rotate this, this blank during turning. So you are using a combination of face plate and lathe dog in this case. And that is something shown on, in this figure as well. So again, the tailstock, lathe center that is holding the workpiece through this, uh, through its tapered end into this, uh, through this hole in the workpiece. And again, you have the headstock and a center inserted into, into the spindle of the headstock. And again, through the center at the end of the blank, uh, this center is um, holding the workpiece, but you are additionally using uh, this uh, face plate, this one and lathe dog to, to provide the drive for the workpiece. So this is another combination that can be used to locate, support and hold the workpiece during machining on a lathe. And finally, we have Mandrels. So mandrels are used to hold work pieces that have already a drilled hole. So these mandrels hold the work piece through that hole. So they are also available in different designs. So this is solid mandrel. So it is having a certain taper. And this is the work piece that already has an internal hole and you have to perform some operation concentric with that already made hole. So you are using this um, mandrel to hold the workpiece from inside. So apart from solid mandrel, we have sleeve type mandrel. So there is a sleeve, a sleeve that actually provides some, some range of gripping for different diameter workpieces. So once you press this mandrel into the hole of a, of a workpiece, they, this mandrel presses down and then it presses up to hold the workpiece. So this is another device that 
uh, locates the workpiece, in this case through a already drilled hole and clamps the workpiece as well. But you can see in this figure that apart from mandrel, we are using the centers as well and this lathe dog as well. So this combination as a whole is locating as well as clamping the workpiece. So these are some examples of how we can uh, locate as well as clamp the workpiece on a lathe machine. In the following segment, we will discuss uh, the methods of locating, supporting, and um, positioning the workpiece in machines other than lathes. But you might have noticed in this, 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 this discussion that these trucks and mandrels and centers are actually sort of example of standard fixtures. Uh, we have to use them as per requirement, but we are not actually designing them for our specific requirements. So sometimes we call them standard fixtures as well. 